Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings as we facilitate this week's worship service from our beautiful sanctuary. And although we are limited by the number of people who are able to be here on campus and in the buildings, we pray and hope that wherever you are viewing this worship service, that you are blessed and that you will join us in worshiping the Lord. These are different and difficult times, and so it's always good to be together, even in virtual community, in receiving the promises of God and in praising God together. We are a community that praises God. We are also a community that prays to God. I invite and encourage you to share your prayer concerns or prayers of thanksgiving by email at prayers at villagechurch.org or sending any of your questions or concerns to Pastor Jack at jackb at villagechurch.org. Please do continue to share your tithes, pledges, and offerings to support the ministries of the church through our giving portal on our church website at villagechurch.org or mailing in your contributions to the church at Box 704, Rancho Santa Fe 92067. We have received generous gifts towards our match giving for COVID-19 relief. Please continue to support this effort through the church website or mailing in your, your donation mark for that purpose. Today, as is the annual tradition here at the Village Church, every second Sunday of June, we designate as Promotion Sunday. It's a time when we celebrate those important milestones from preschool, our preschoolers, all the way to our graduate students, from those who are going from preschool to elementary school, elementary school to middle school, middle school to high school, and of course, the class of 2020 graduating high school seniors and college students. We also are celebrating those of our Boy Scout Troop 766 as they advance in rank, and particularly those who have achieved the final rank of Eagle Scouts. We're also offering our word of thanksgiving to all of our children here at the Village Church who have served so faithfully as acolytes for our 10.30 a.m. service this past year. Please watch this video and enjoy.
To all of you children and students of all grade levels and Boy Scouts, congratulations and well done. We are very proud of you and give thanks to the Lord for you, for your families, for your friends, for all those who support you. And certainly here at the Village Church, we support and love you and look forward to what you'll be doing on your educational journey. To all of our acolytes, thank you for serving in this important way, and we look forward to you continue serving in the year to come. You show us that no one is ever too young to serve the Lord. We have come to worship and serve the Lord, so let us hear and receive these words from Holy Scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Friends, let us worship the living God.
in a time when we're required to wash our hands frequently and when we're supposed to disinfect everything around us, we neglect what's inside of us, the sin that makes us sick also. Thanks be to God, though, because God can take that sin away. Only God, through Jesus, can do that. God invites us to confess our sins and to be assured of forgiveness. Will you please join me first silently in prayer and then in a prayer of confession as we pray together. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we are a people of unclean lips, but it is not only unclean lips we possess. We are people with unclean hands and unclean hearts. We have broken your laws times without number. We are guilty of pride, unbelief, self-centeredness, and idolatry. Affect our hearts with the severity of our sin and the glory of your righteousness as we acknowledge our sins in your holy presence, knowing that the faithful work of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave his life and rose in the newness of life for the life of the world. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I declare to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Indeed, we praise God, for God has reconciled us first to himself through Jesus Christ and to one another. Join me now in the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. His word still remains. 
Good morning, Kids Village. Today is Promotion Sunday, and so today is the day when we acknowledge all of you who are graduating. Today we celebrate our Acolyte program, those of you who have been a part of the program, and those of you who are graduating out. We celebrate our third graders and our fifth graders. We celebrate all of you eighth graders who are graduating from middle school. We celebrate you 12th graders who are graduating from high school. And we also celebrate all of you who are graduating from universities this year. We know that your graduation ceremonies are going to look different this year, so we hope that you all feel loved and celebrated and know that your Village Church family is just so proud of you all. As a part of Kids Village, our acolytes will be receiving their necklaces that they have been creating as a part of the program. Our third graders will be receiving Bibles and our fifth graders will be receiving devotionals. A few of those will be dropped off at homes this morning as a part of our promotion Sunday. If you were not able to send us your addresses ahead of time and would like those gifts delivered to your houses, please let us know and we would be happy to drop those off for you all sometime this next week. Our hope and prayer is that you all would feel celebrated today and that you would know if you are moving into a new job or if it's a new school or a new classroom, that God is going to be with you wherever it is that you are. This is an exceptionally difficult and unique year. And so our prayer is that you would seek out God and know that he has an incredible plan for your life. We miss seeing all of you and we'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye-bye.
Friends, I invite you now to a few moments of prayer as we come before the living God. Open your hearts, your minds, and your souls. Trust that the Lord of all will hear and will answer within the goodness of his will. Pray with me. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we come before your throne, trusting your mercy and grace, mercy that forgives and welcomes us, and grace that restores and enlivens us. You alone are worthy to be praised, the source of all being, all truth, all goodness, all that will truly answer the need of this moment and the yearning of the ages. So in our prayer, we come first to praise, to praise you for creating us into existence, for endowing us with all we need for life, for entrusting us with the care of your creation, and for inviting us in pure love to love you in return. In this season of life, good Father, we remember the wise counsel of your word that tells us that sometimes we have things we need to say and want to say, but we cannot find words to say. In the power of your Holy Spirit, then, we ask you to say for us what cannot be said, to express for us the deep pain that is so evident in so many lives right now, to exclaim for us the amazing joy that yet fills our hearts, and to say both how sorry we are and how proud we are. Sorry for the ways we fail you and each other, and yet proud of how others reach out to love you and to love each other. We thank you, gentle Redeemer, for many things, and as we list them in our hearts and through these words, we also ask for them liberally to be spread among all your people. We thank you for comforting the ill and dying. We thank you for inspiring those who research, who create, who serve others. We thank you for bringing light to confused minds, peace to troubled souls, understanding to those who are willing to learn and patience to those who fight battles that seem never to end. We thank you for blessings yet to come, but for which we feel a particular urgency and need in our lives today. We thank you for the blessing of unity among those who disagree, the blessing of true leadership in government and business and social life, the blessing of generosity among those who have and thankfulness among those who have need, the blessing of justice and equality and freedom for all people in the whole human family on earth. We can never tell of all your blessings nor of all our needs and wants. And so as always, we turn to the words that Jesus taught us to say, praying together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us begin our time in the scriptures with a prayer of illumination. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. And now a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, 
because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make full of gladness with your presence. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. The word of the Lord. Friends, will you join me in prayer? Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for your promises in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. 
May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For it is in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. This sermon series has as its focus how we are to live out the life and love of Jesus Christ in a time of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic and the pandemic of social injustice, particularly more recently, the injustice of racial and economic and social inequality. How we live in every time, particularly in times of great disruption, great challenge, requires a recalibration of who we are and whose we are. My college buddy who earlier this month became the chief executive officer of LinkedIn shares a story as a 10-year-old when he noticed his dad who had scotch taped this line from Shakespeare's Coriolanus, Act 4, Scene 3. Quote, that when the sea was calm, all boats alike showed mastership in floating. When my friend asked his dad about this, his dad said, true character and success is defined not by how you act when everything is going your way. Rather, it's how you react when everything isn't. In times of pandemics of the kind that wrecks the lungs and bodily organs and the kind that arises from the wreckage of our hearts and that wrecks havoc on our souls, we are needing the work of the Lord to re-examine our lives, our lives' direction, and all of us are always needing change. That is why every week we have the prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. On this promotion Sunday where some of our preschoolers who are now part of the class of 2033 and some of our students who have graduated as part of the class of 2020, it's timely to hear the story once again involving former British Prime Minister William Gladstone, who encountered the young son of one of his friends. The young man wanted the Prime Minister's advice on his future career plans. First, he explained, I plan to complete my studies at Oxford. Splendid, replied the Prime Minister, and what then? Well, sir, I then plan to study the law and become a prominent barrister or lawyer. Excellent, responded Gladstone, and what then? Then I plan to stand for election and become a member of parliament. Wonderful, said Gladstone, and what then? Then, sir, I plan to rise to prominence in the party and to be appointed to a cabinet post. A worthy ambition, replied the senior statesman, and what then? Oh, Mr. Gladstone, the boy blurted out a bit self-consciously, I plan one day to become prime minister and serve my queen with the same distinction as you. A noble desire, young man, and what then? Well, sir, I expect that in time I will be forced to retire from public life. You will indeed, replied the Prime Minister. And what then? Puzzled by the question, the young man said hesitantly, I expect then that one day I will die. Yes, you will. And what then? I don't know, sir. I have not thought any further than that. Young man said Gladstone, you are a fool. Go home and think of your life from its end. Those students who have completed our village church preschool and all of those of our students who have graduated from college, that span of about 20 years is one generation. You all belong to a generation of, of great change. That by the time that I am of retirement age, the preschoolers will be entering the workforce and will be the leaders of the world. It's been said in business that you spend one-third of your life learning, one-third of your life earning, and one-third of your life returning. Yet, if we look 
at the conversation between Gladstone and the young man, if we look at our life from its end, what if we always had as our life about returning? Returning what we have been given. In our faith language, returning means giving. It means serving. It means loving. It means making the world better for everyone. You don't have to be an elementary school age person or a, or a high school student or a college student to start all over again. It's a matter of reorienting our life's priorities every single day, every season of life. Recalibrating our life's vision, mission, and values to reflect that of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose very life was about returning returning that which the Father had entrusted to him, returning that which he had received from his Father's love, and of course, as we see after the resurrection, literally returning to the Heavenly Father, and as the Creed confesses, who is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We encounter the Apostle Peter giving his famed sermon on the Feast of the Pentecost, Disciples from different regions speaking different languages, it's a multicultural, multilingual, multi-ethnic gathering. That which the Spirit can only accomplish, and there's so much confusion. In the midst of that confusion, Peter centers his message on Jesus. Peter cites King David from Psalm 16, you have been known to, You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Now, Peter, like David, sees that Jesus of Nazareth shows us the way of life, for he himself is the life, is life itself. Jesus, who makes our life full of gladness. And how do we know that? How can we be convinced, like Peter, like King David, in our heart of hearts, in our heart and soul, that this is the case? that Jesus is the essence of life, is life itself, and will make our life full of gladness. Peter says at the beginning of our text that Jesus was attested by God. In other translations, it says Jesus was accredited by God. Attested and accredited. Our students and their schools know about attesting and accrediting. Their report cards attest to the next grade level, they have completed all the necessary requirements to advance to that next level. High school seniors get their diplomas to indicate that they have enough basic skills and knowledge to enter the workplace if they should so choose, or college and university. College graduates have their bachelor's degree or their postgraduate degree to indicate to workplaces they are ready to enter the professional workforce. Schools demonstrate to agencies that they have the necessary credential teaching staff, the necessary safety protocols, the structured curriculum, and organizational mechanisms to be accredited, to be considered bona fide. Jesus Christ is attested and accredited by God, according to St. Peter, he is attested and accredited as the Lord and the Messiah, the anointed Savior. How is, he, how is he confirmed in this way? Peter is very, very specific. He identifies Jesus with a biography, with a geographic location, Jesus of Nazareth. He belongs to a particular hometown. He lived a life. He died a definite death in the hands of certain judges in a certain kind of death, a crucifixion. And it was God, the living God, who raised him from the dead. Peter then directs the attention to the Israelites to consider this presentation of what he has just spoken, how Jesus has been attested, how he has been accredited, Jesus is the real thing. Jesus is the bona fide Lord and Savior. He is the true Lord. He is the true Savior. He is what life is all about. In him 
is the gladness of life. He returns back and says that Jesus of Nazareth is whom you crucified. The narrative goes on to describe how the Holy Spirit pierced the hearts of all those who heard this sermon, which prompts them to question, to question who they are, who is Jesus of Nazareth, what is my life about, what is my life's direction going towards. Peter's exhortation is clear. Repent, be baptized, for you will be forgiven, and receive the Holy Spirit. For that promise is for all. Repent is to bend away from our own sins, our own prejudices, our own greed, our own proclivity to violence. To bend away from that. Bend away from our human tendencies and bend towards God's heart. Bend towards the life and values and mission of Jesus of Nazareth. When the Holy Spirit is given, it is always the beginning where God will send us God will send us to live lives that make a difference in the world. Two weeks ago, when my 17-year-old son and I were driving to downtown San Diego to join one of the very peaceful protests calling for justice for George Floyd's death and the aftermath of his tragic death, Daniel, my son, had asked me, what else can he do as a, as a high school junior rising senior? What more can he do, he asked, very honestly and frankly in the car. I shared with him the same advice I gave to a young adult in my former church in New Jersey who had called me up a few years ago while I was still serving here at at Village Church. And she was headed to the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. She's from West Africa, from, from Cameroon. And at that time that we spoke, as she was entering medical school, it was in the aftermath of Charlottesville those riots of white white supremacists carrying torches. And she asked me four years ago, Pastor Neil, what more can I do? I feel like I want to do more. I remembered that conversation with her as I shared that with Daniel. I told him what I told her. Study hard, do your best, engage in all these experiences like protest, like your summer internship, like your Eagle Scout, because the time will come when you will be placed in positions of authority and given a platform and leadership, and you will be able to effect change in the world around you. For now, as a student, your time is to learn. Your time is to add your voice as you are being shaped and formed for the work of God. Now the young adult, in a couple years, will be a full-fledged medical doctor. And I look forward to saying doctor when she crosses that stage. Her generation, as with my son, are emerging leaders of the world who are disciples of Jesus Christ, who are being sent out to impact this world to the glory of God. The pandemic of injustice and the pandemic of viruses are not new phenomena. Illnesses of the body as with illness in the heart, have always been part of the human condition. Even the apostle Peter, the great preacher who interpreted the multiple languages at Pentecost, will grapple with the apostle Paul himself. As Paul described in Galatians chapter 2, how Peter was stubborn, that Peter insists that only the Jews belong in the covenant, that the promises of God were not for the Gentiles. Only by the intervention of the Holy Spirit, as chronicled later in Acts chapter 10, do we see how Peter, that great preacher of Pentecost, he himself is changed in his heart when he sees the vision that changed his mind and heart to see how God's covenant had always been about Jews and Gentiles. That it was always about all ethnicities, even if powers and principalities say otherwise. What counts is the world, is the word and will of God that all people are equal in the sight of God. You and I live our lives from its end because the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus is God's protest against all human violence and greed. 
God's protest is the decisive life and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, who unlocks us to be free, to have freedom to live in such a way that we are called continuing to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love one another as Christ loved us. That is a change of life. We are called continually every single day, a, a life marked by loving God and loving neighbor. Watch out, because the Holy Spirit is on the move and pierces our hearts. Here's how our scripture ends. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Graduation ceremonies are also called commencements because it is not an ending, but a beginning. We have arrived at the point in our worship service where it is commencement, our time to live out the life and love of Jesus Christ with a message that we have just heard through the prayers, through the song, and through the sermon. The prophet Micah in the Old Testament asks, O mortal, O humanity, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? Receive this blessing and benediction, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and all of you as you do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. Oh